Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's take a look at the new Zoom R4 audio recorder. If you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. The voiceover for this video was recorded with the R4's internal microphone. Okay, I bought this multitrack recorder myself, so this video is not sponsored. The R4 is 14 cm long, 7.5 cm wide and 3.5 cm high. It is powered by 4 AA batteries and can also be powered over USB. It has two combined XLR and TS inputs and one built-in microphone. On the left side, You'll find a headphone or line-out jack and buttons for volume adjustment. And on the right side, there's the power switch, a USB Type-C port and a microSD card slot. On top, there's a color screen, four faders, a switch for switching on and off the microphone and numerous buttons, which we'll go into later. The sample format is 48 kHz, 32 or 24 bits mono or stereo. The high bit resolution enables you to normalize low volume recordings without losing too much detail. Zoom is particularly fond of their dual AD converter setup in this machine. There is a low gain and a high gain converter in this, so your recordings theoretically will sound great regardless if you're capturing quiet or loud audio. Okay. Before we walk through all the features, this. After turning on the device for the first time, you'll need to enter the time date and the battery type. The recorder needs this information to show you the amount of battery power remaining correctly. Right. I'll record a short track using keyboard, guitar and vocals. Drums will be provided by the R4 itself. This should give you an idea of what to expect from this device and if you have any more questions after that, please post them in the comments. I'll begin by recording a keyboard and don't worry, I'll get into the guitar stuff after that. Synths usually sound best when recorded in stereo, so I assigned it two XLR inputs to track 1 and 2 by pressing the input button and then the two leftmost buttons under the screen. Press input again to go back to the mixer screen, then press the two leftmost buttons simultaneously to join tracks 1 and 2 together into a stereo track. Now press the rhythm button and use the four buttons under the screen to turn on the rhythm track. There are a lot of drum tracks to choose from here. From plain vanilla metronomes to world music styles, I'll quickly browse some of them until I reached the hip hop groove. Now adjust the tempo to 90 beats per minute. Let's also make this a bit louder. Then go back to the mixer screen and use the two leftmost faders to adjust the preamp, so your recording is neither too quiet nor too loud. Okay, let's record something. I'll record a guitar next and I'll beg your pardon in advance, I'm not a good guitar player. I'll connect my guitar to the left XLR input and set up track 3 for recording. The R4 automatically will use its high sensitivity preamp. Now the R4 can use two insert and two send effects on each track. The insert effects will be recorded and they're clearly tailored for guitar players. Press the effects button to configure them. In the first slot, you'll find a selection of guitar amp models. Let's listen to some of them.
The second slot provides some distortion effects as well as a selection of chorus, flanger, wah-wah and delays. Unfortunately, all these effects are mono only and while it said the guitar amp models sound good, these effects can be described as competent but not breathtaking. Right, I think I'll use the tremolo effect here. Now let's take a look at the track settings. Each track has its own EQ, panning, delay and reverb settings. These sand effects are not written to your audio file unless you render your song. I'll set up the EQ and reverb resulting in this sound. Now let's record this. On track 4 I'm recording a bass line using this analog synth here. The noise you're hearing is from that synth by the way. Right, but now I have a problem. I want to add some vocals, but all the tracks are in use. Let's zoom have thought of this and added this bounce button here. This will bounce all your takes into a stereo track. You have two choices here. Quick bounce will render your tracks as fast as possible, while real-time bounce will allow you to operate the faders while bouncing. Once the tracks are bounced, the bounce track will be displayed as an additional stereo track that plays along to the four usual tracks, giving you room for more stuff to add. All the while, the original recordings are kept in memory and can be brought back anytime. Okay, I'll add the vocal take now, but before we listen to the result, let's take a look at the R4's capabilities as an audio interface. Setting it up is fairly easy. Just download the drivers from Zoom's page, then hold down the Option button, and then press Settings, then USB, then Audio Interface, then select the type of device you're connecting to. Here, I'm using it inside Reaper. 
To measure latency, I've connected this setup to my R20 recorder, capturing my Reface DX. Left audio channel is listening to this mini PC while capturing the left audio channel of the DX, and the right side is connected to the synth directly. And while we're here, let's take a look at the noise floor, which can be done in Audacity. The faders were at the 50% position for this. Last but not least, here's a comparison of audio captured on the R4 versus audio captured on the R20. I've established in previous videos that the R20 has pretty good audio quality. Both takes are normalized in Audacity, and I'll switch between them every two seconds. Last but not least, let's take a look at file transfer to a computer. For that, you can choose the file transfer option in the USB menu and then drag the files into any folder on your drive where you can use them for further processing. Yeah, and that was my quick overview on the R4. Here's the final take on the demo track. Yeah, and that's it for today, the Zoom R4. As usual, I think it's good value for the price, and you will see Zoom are knowing what they're doing here. They have decades of experience in building audio recorders. I think the audio quality is really good, and the microphone is good. I didn't show you audio punch-in, but it's possible. And the thing I missed there, you can't place time markers. So punching in and out using an instrument you need two hands to play on is virtually impossible. And while it's certainly nice to have all those amps and effects, having some stereo effects and maybe one and two that makes the audience go wow would have been so much nicer. But all in all, I can't really complain. The build quality is really good here, and battery life as well. This device is targeted at guitar players and not so much at keyboard players, but even keyboard players will find a lot to like here. So if you thought this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. And if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can become a channel member using the button under this video, buy my music on Bandcamp or join my Patreon, link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you again very very soon. Bye bye!